Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Tom Mizzy. You're watching my channel, Mizzy14, and I'm here doing a view of Insecure Season 3, Episode 3, Back Was Like. Now, it started off with Issa and Dan was in the bed. Come remember Dan told Issa he could sleep on her bed because her, she could be playing about her back and her neck. So they sleep side by side, and then they face forward because I guess Issa was like, you trying to take a lot of covers, you got the better pillow. So I took the pillow, swapped the pillows, got crumbs under the pillow. I said, oh, that's nasty. Like, <laughs> and then she went on daydream. So before the daydream, like, they were talking and they started kissing. I said, yes, finally, I knew it was going to happen. But she was thinking about it. So they was in the daydream and he was went down on her, all that stuff. And she about to climb and everything day that she woke up. They started talking again and she said she had to go to work. So... Her Molly was at the um, doggy spot, and her dog dog was getting face shoes, massage, and a paw massage. Her dog name was Favorite Flav. I said, "Oh, oh okay, Molly." <laughs> but she said she excited for an all black firm, and she excited to have all black coworkers. And then she asked Issa, "How about your job, your new job, and everything?" And Issa said, "I didn't get the job yet, but um, I got an interview." And she said, good, just get the interview, have you go, and you can get out of Daniel's place. That's what Issa said, you know what, I kind of like staying at Daniel's place. And she said, what for, if you sleep on the couch, why, why are you sitting in this place? And she said, couch, I ain't sleeping on the couch. And she said, what? You sleep in the same bed, girl, that's not going to be good, because at the end of the day, you're going to end up having sex. She said, no, it's platonic, it's platonic, we have a... We don't sleep with each other. We side by side. Do I think about having sex with him? Do I even want him to have sex with him? Do I even think about it now? She said, hell yeah. But we cool and we get each other. And it's not like that. We good friends and we, I like his comfortable com company. So I like the place. So she's, Molly said, oh, okay, whatever. So Molly was her job. And she met with her boss. She met with the co-workers. And she was in the office. And she's so excited to work there. And everything, and this was Molly started complaining, uh, comparing her old firm to this, because she was typing a document. And I guess somehow the I guess the computer didn't have the DocuSign, so the her sister Cameron told her that we don't have that, and you could do something with your Adobe or whatever, but it's kind of tricky. But we don't have the DocuSign, but we do have a courier that picks up between it's like hour or nine to three or something like that, and. But sometimes at the five, depends on the guy. And he said, lucky he's cute and everything. So Molly was like, oh my God. She said, what's you? She said, you okay? She said, no, it's just something my own firm done. And it's a, no big deal. And then she get later on, she was getting boxes in her office because she was about to open the door and there was man boxes there. She said, why are my boxes here in the storage? She said, your office is your storage. She said, oh, oh my gosh. My old child, we got an off-site um, courier. No, off-site um storage and this is this she said oh well you gotta do what you gotta do right and they was at a meeting right and i guess the boss was not there and he was not on time and he was coming late to the meeting and she said oh well it's not that it's like the boss should be in the meeting and he's gonna cut um cp time and stuff like that and they said oh no sometimes he does a um phone calls and then you start the meeting without him and then he joins in and then somebody clowned, he said, well, I bet you her old firm, everybody starts on time, right? And they started clown, laughing and clowning. I, now she feeling like kind of guilty, like dritty and feeling like shame for saying what she had to say and just say, saying all that stuff and complaining. Because now they freaking teasing your ass because you keep complaining about everything. I say, yes, you need to stop that, big girl. You should just stop that because at the end of the day, you work in a new firm. If your people is thinking that you are so prima donna and you all bougie and then you can't do this and since we are all black or something, whatever this is, my old firm does this, you comparing and they don't really want to work with you if you keep doing that. So you need to humble yourself. It's different change. Change is inevitable. You left this one firm from this other firm. You should not think it's going to be the same way. So she feels she felt downgraded. That been upgraded, uplifted, whatever. So... Issa went to um, the property manager interview. That dude was tacky as hell. I said, who the fuck want to manage this man's property? Paper all over the place. The mailbox is all scrooged up crazy. And he showed the apartment. 
and she said the apartment rent was thousand nine. He said it is thousand nine, but for you as a property manager, it will be seven fifty a month. She said, oh, seven fifty. And he said, well, do you want the job? But he asked her, do you know how to handle the plunger? And she said, gave him a funny answer. She said, don't you just plunge? I said, say more than that. I mean, granted, a property manager, you don't have to fix things yourself, but you should know how to do some things. So you should know how to know a lot of knowledge of fixing stuff. Where well, you have to get a contractor and stuff to do the things for you. If you can't do it yourself, you need to know how to do something. And so he asked her, do she want the job or not? I said, all right, no, she's like a job. We ran the of that. She got no experience of handle property management. But I guess they needed somebody. So they gave it to her. She said, well, you got a, at least you got a degree or something. It's like other people who don't have shit, you know, from internet or something. I said, ooh, that's crazy. That fucked up. Like, <laughs> so, um, there we get this scene, right? So she had a friend's, um, time with the, her girlfriends, Molly, Issa, Kelly, and Tiffany was still talking and thinking Molly's going to complain about the job and how they do it. She had to do her own storage. There's no offside storage. They had the, there's no inside curvier. They, we had, and she had to build her own hours, billable hours by hand. She said, this is ridiculous. And basically she being judgmental. It's like she judging her firm because they're all black cats. They're supposed to be really great or better than a white counterpart and stuff and she feel like Kelly say sometimes we over condition to turn our people down it's like relax you start a new job this change gonna be there you just gotta accept it and deal with it and it calm all the down and then Tiffany said you just gotta do what you gotta do do I like the fact that my body's changing with this baby no do I love the fact that you have a group chat without me and that stuff and they said oh that was crazy and Tiffany was all her emotion. She said, wait, hold up. It's okay, girl. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, I'm fine. And they said, okay. <laughs> and so she asked him to check the email about the Palm Springs. And uh, Issa was freaking texting right in front of her face. She said, Issa, don't you know I can read your text message through freaking over your soldier, uh, shoulder? I said, oh my gosh, Issa. Why you did right in front of her face? Like, you was Try to be all subtle and figure out in the open. She see you, right? She see you. So Molly said, "Girl, relax. Girl, we got it. We cool. We go. We gonna be there and something like that." So Kelly showed told Issa that she got an apartment with her budget. It look good. You prove you be able to get it, and you just have a half bath, and then you can go down to a spot down the block from you, and they can do it after six. And she said, "No, um, I think I kind of want to go." Stay in Daniel place a little bit longer. And he said, what do you mean staying a little bit longer? And he said, well, you stay in the couch? She said, no. That she said she took me to bed. They said, what? Girl, you took me to bed to set up? It's like, what the hell y'all doing? And basically, all the girl's friends say, no, don't jump the bridge with him. Don't do it. You play with fire. Get your own place, girl. Because it's never going to happen. Y'all two together. Y'all cool. But somehow, it's not going to match well for y'all two. It's not. It's somehow it never works out and y'all need to get together and leave and stop this bullshit and so she said don't you think I should even try to see if something will be worked out they said no I said oh girl girl I mean sometimes it does happen y'all meant to be good friends not lovers so freaking um Daniel and Issa was at the laundromat they was talking for a little bit and um, this is what Issa told Daniel that she might got a job offer and she got an apartment with 750 and she gonna go to her own place. And he said, well, he asked her why. She said, well, if I got my own place, you got your own place, we'd be cool. It'd be better for a thing. It'd be better off for us. She said, would it be better off? Kind of like flirt, flirtatious, like he still want her. And I know she still got a sexual tension with them too, but they try to fight it. So she was like, uh, crazy. And they started talking. He said, good. He basically said he don't want her to leave. Now, we get to see with Daniel and Fika Khalil. Remember, Khalil is the guy that Issa knows and they went way back. And uh, Khalil is also like a uh, producer, son that worked with Spider or worked with people in the industry and stuff. So there was a collab because Daniel called Issa Khalil last week. He said he want to work with a track with him for Spider. 
So they were sitting there together and Daniel played his thing. Like Daniel's style is most like an old classical back in the day type beats where people love that type of music where you gotta think and it has a nice little chord arrangements. Like kind of strings and guitars, not guitars, strings and trumpets or something, like metal type instruments. Whereas Kalea is most of the up to date, uh, up to date on uh, recent kind of beats, like the drum hard beats and the guitar. It's like new school versus the old school type producing and um, instrumental tracks. So Khalil said, Spider like something like this, and maybe okay, we could work something while you tone down the. Um, um, the soft tones and hype up the drums and you'd be good so he played around something like that and showed them and it did sound nice both versions sound nice and Daniel was not feeling that because he said this is like his track it should be his leather mark it should not be changed like that and so when they went to see Spider Spider and Kenny Booth when they asked him let's see what you got Khalil played not Khalil Daniel played, played his version and Khalil was kind of pissed off because they worked on something and he didn't play the track that they worked on so Khalil's in his mind and, and his freaking feelings then um, played that Spider liked it he said oh this sounds hot now when they said well we had something that we were working on played that one and Dan was not trying to do it but he played that and Khalil, uh, Spider liked that one too he said oh I don't care choose I like both of them let's work something out with this and he said, don't worry about it. I got something. We got something else stuff going on. And that's why Spider walked out. But Clear was like, all in his feelings. Like, I said, oh, that is something. Right? Mm-hmm. That's something. All right, so um, then we get this thing that Frida and Issa was at a job recruitment fair and trying to get more people of color to that firm. And they was talking. They had, like, one kid in that, like, a little young teenage boy. Like a young guy who probably just graduated and got this degree and he's trying to get in the work first. And they just talk a little bit. And then Issa walked out a little bit and he saw, she saw this kind of like a um, group organization called the Beat Crew. And they was nice. They came dancing and trumpets and playing music instruments and stuff like that. They was like hype up. So I guess that performance would get people candidates to come to their table and see what they're about. So then uh, Issa went to talk to the guy and she said she admired this and they said what's it about and about how you, this is good how you're helping the community about bringing art to the kids and had to perform and show them express themselves and something to do that so instead of being in the streets and stuff like that so it was nice and that was cool and Issa Frida came to get Issa because they had started in the line and she said she got to fly and then went to um, back to what she had to do now back at We Got Ya, they had a candidate they was interviewing because I guess they had to few people they called somebody in the office and they was talking and she seemed like she was going to be a good candidate and Frida was talking to her and then Frida said, you know, we have a five year plan and trying to get Issa to explain something. Issa, her mind was all over the place. She wasn't even thinking about what the hell was going on and she was saying some random awkward ass shit. I said, damn Issa, you're supposed to be an interviewer and you all freaking local and not even in the right mind. So Frida said she had to go get somebody to Carol. And that's when they started talking to Issa because they was kind of like showing like kind of like face to face and they was kind of staring at each other. So the interviewee was freaking a drink of breaking the ice with Issa. She said, oh, I like that shirt. She said, oh, good. Thank you. I got a lot of for free market and so like that. And they started talking. And then she's asked her, how do you like working here? She said, it's nice. She said, how do you really feel about working here? Basically, she understand what she was coming from. Issa understand her question. She said, yeah, you guys are good or bad day. She said, how you like working here? She said, how long you been here? She said, five years. She said, oh, well, you really must like it. So she went in the table, you know, she was in her feelings, like stapling shit, like in her feelings, like, damn, you don't really like, like this, like that much. So then she started researching the beat crew, and I said, oh, maybe she gonna start trying to jump shift and trying to go to that uh, organization and try to work with that. Because seems like that's more of Issa Alley that we got y'all, but uh, it is what it is. So that, so Issa took Daniel out to um, dinner. Just to congratulate him and appreciate him for putting up with her and staying in her place, staying in his place and being there for her. And they had the thing and he was in his feelings. So they was having dinner and she said, what's going on? It's like, you being snappy, you all, it's like, what's going on? So he told her about 
the Khalil situation and that how Khalil is mad at him because he played this track first and not the track that they worked on. She said, why you would do that when you know Khalil knows Spider what he likes. He said, but this is my track and everything. She said, well, well you had to start somewhere, get your foot in the door and then you work it up and you do whatever you want. But maybe you should go apologize to Khalil and feel like it's not um, right and then you could work something out. So he said, Phew. He said, like, I don't know how I'm going to get career advice from you. I said, what? You want to take the dip like that? I said, uh-uh, damn you. You may be cute, you know, but don't fucking go get it fucked up, twisted, coming out of Issa like that. She said, what you just saying to me? He said, well, I don't know why I'm always there for you. You can't know how, you don't have nothing about doing hand in a career. I always come and save your ass. She said, oh, that's how you feel. And he said, like the Marshall chest up there, like he said, mm. Now he ain't backing down. So they were sleeping in bed to bed, and Issa couldn't sleep. He couldn't sleep. He, she was laying her feelings under the bed, and he said, "No, you know, I don't mean that. I apologize." He started like spooning her, trying to kiss her thing, and then they started going at it for real, for real this time. I said, "Ooh, yes, good." They started kissing and going at it. He going down. He did the same thing. Like he asked her on the day dream, "Do you like it?" And she was not feeling it. She said, "No, this is not right." Pull up her pants and said, it's not like. And he said, cool. And she said, cool. And it's like, that's it. I said, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, it's meant to be good friends, but I don't think it's meant to be as lovers or something like that. I guess after what he said his thing and she's in her feelings like that, I guess y'all need to move out and do it your own and see how to go from there. But hope y'all like my video. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.